Hello everyone and welcome back to Fun Ahead TV. In today's episode, I wear a green sweater, we get the cams back up in bank one, and we get them completely retimed. So, I'm going to shut up and we'll get right to it. Let's get our old Vario cam pads out of the way. Here is our new set. As you can see, we've got cams setting here. They are ready to be, we're going to be putting those in time today. And then we will move on to putting the engine in time, at least putting bank one in time. By the way, this is the part number for the pads, in case you are curious. Um, but also, you can always look it up on Pelican Parts. All right, let's put in our O-ring here. Go, 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 go! Now again, so this is the bottom pad, and as you can see when we look at the video cam solenoid, there is an oil feed coming through this pad. Oil comes in through here, and of course pressurizes the entire uh, solenoid. Well, here's the solenoid, but this oil pressure is what actually moves this part and changes your cam phasing. Kind of had to you kind of have to give it a little bit of an extra push it, it clipped over but then there's an actual lip on this and you have to push it a little more so that the so that this part of of the whatever you'd call this this plat this surface can actually get under that lip and and fully hold this in place okay just like that bottom one is on and replaced now we will take our top one here's this lip again so you can kind of see Maybe it's hard to tell on the camera, but there is in fact a lip there. So we kind of hook the lip and then boop, pop it up and over, push that in, and we are held on. Our VarioCam solenoid is good to go and ready to go back in the car. This is our uh, VarioCam solenoid tool. We'll use that in a minute here once we uh, put everything in time. But to put it in time, first and foremost, you can see on this chain, there are two lighter uh, links here. These links are exactly eight links apart. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You align this link up with, like each of the links up with this mark here on the camshaft sprockets. That's the intake cam, of course. And we will do the same, we'll, we have the same thing Oops, sorry. We have the same thing on the exhaust cam here as well. So we're gonna take there. So you can see, maybe we have our chain lined up, or that light link lined up with that dot. And then we're going to now take the exhaust cam. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, and just like that, hopefully you can see, so there's the mark on the cam, there's the light chain link, mark on the cam, light chain link, and you can count spaces in between, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So actually, congratulations, our cams are in time. Now of course there's more to this, so what we'll do is we'll take our VarioCam solenoid, put it back in. Uh, in between and then we can set the entire assembly into the engine and clamp it down with our cam caps here and then we will truly put it in time relative to the crankshaft and we do that using a special tool but by the way it's reverse threaded so we're putting this in reverse threading it in getting it down in there as far as it can so I kind of tighten the nut down a little bit Right, so we've got our nut taut now. Now I'm going to just kind of turn this down, which we are compressing our entire solenoid at this point, so that it's that much easier to get it uh, installed between the two chains. Two chains. Yeah, two sides of the chain. There's one chain. Only one chain. Links are lined up. Sweet. They are. And then now time to wrestle with this thing. 
Oh my gosh, that was a freaking ordeal. So sorry I had to uh, kind of pause the video there. You just kind of have to finagle with it. Now it's time to take the tension off of the uh, solenoid, let the spring just release. So we're going to tighten, because remember reverse threaded. Okay, got the special tool out. Cams are still in time, so that's awesome. Well, that is now done. So obviously we can't put this back in the engine yet because the valve or the lifter carrier is sitting on the table to our left over here. So we need to, uh, first things first, get that put in and get it all torqued down. So as you just saw, we just got to this point. We basically reinstalled the uh, the lifter carrier. Um, so there are 15 volts that go into the lifter carrier, all of which get torque, torqued to uh, 10 Newton meters. And you're supposed to kind of start in the middle and work your way out. So I started with these two uh, and then the top and bottom. And then you can just kind of work your way, you know, crisscross your way out. And uh, eventually you have everything torqued. And I was taking a Sharpie to mark the bolts after I torqued each one of them. Then we put the lifters themselves back in. Uh, and of course, before doing that, I took uh, some assembly lube and just kind of rubbed it on the inside of the uh, lifter housing there to uh, make sure that the, the walls were all nice and lubed up. And then after we got the lifters in, went ahead and put some uh, assembly lube on the top of the lifters uh, just to kind of get those nice and lubricated and good to go uh, and prepared for uh, putting the cams in which is actually next uh, and in addition to that uh, I lubed up all of the journals within the cylinder head that will uh, that the cams ro uh, ride on so they are ready to go and ready for lubrication for the first restart eventually now we are to the point where uh, we're ready to put the cams back in or as you saw we replaced the vario cam pads So those are all fresh and good to go. We got the solenoid installed back in the middle The cams are in time relative to one another based on that eight chain link spacing get the cams installed from there We're gonna put it in time and so I'll show you guys how to do that and then this bank will be all done All right, so let's get to putting these bad boys in <music> Freaking dokey, boys and girls. So, as you can see, the cams are back in and secured. We currently have the Porsche Special Tool um, for timing the cams relative to the crankshaft uh, installed. Uh, this is the purpose of this is to lock the cams in such a way, in such an orientation, uh, so that they are uh, perfectly just so, specifically the exhaust cam. Of course, um, the cams can move relative to one another due to the vario cam solenoid. That is, like I explained in the last video, the purpose of the vario cam solenoid is to phase them. But of course, given that the exhaust cam is driven by the intermediate shaft, which is therefore driven by the crank, this is the cam that is directly aligned or needs to be aligned with the crank so uh, the way the special tool works is it has a groove here as you can see uh, that slots right into the, the uh, slot on the end of the crank or on the end of the cam now once that goes in uh, 
this arm here, now this just has to be touching uh, the end of this little lobe here. Now once it is, then you know that this camshaft is perfectly flat and level and good to be um, turned in with regards to uh, the crank. There's this uh, special tool. Uh, I can't remember the exact number. I'll flash it up on the screen as we go. This particular tool is meant to hold the cams down and make sure that the cams are down in the, their journals. And of course, I, I put plenty of uh, assembly lube onto this so that as we're, you know, we're not turning the cams much with this in place, but enough. And I don't, I didn't want to put any sort of like score marks onto the cam just so as to not damage it I put plenty of lubrication in there all right now it is time to get this engine in time really quickly before we get into the nitty-gritty of how to time the cams relative to the crank I just want to point out something really quickly for bank one notice that the cam rotor on the intake cam shown here is facing the outside. Now this is only true for bank one. This is bank one's top dead center. For bank two, the crankshaft needs to be rotated 360 degrees forward, which therefore rotates both cams 180 degrees forward. That then puts both rotors of, the, the camshafts of both rotors towards the inside of the engine. And this is bank two's top dead center orientation. So just note that when you're doing bank one, the rotor faces the outside of the engine, and when you're doing bank two, rotor needs to be facing the inside. Okay, now let's resume. Here's how to do it. So I have gone ahead and put the crank in uh, cylinder six, top dead center, U6. OT, that's actual crank top dead center. Of course, not valve train top dead center, crank top dead center. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our timing chain tensioner back in bank one to tension the main chain going from the exhaust cam to the intermediate shaft. Once that is in tension, we are going to rotate the crank from U6 to U UT. So we're gonna rotate it in uh, that much orientation and that's it. That is supposed to be what will then allow kind of for the tension to, uh, you know, the, the timing change to kind of move enough to where we can guarantee that by the time from this orientation to this orientation, we've got everything taut, everything is good. Of course, in the meantime, the cams will not move. They're locked in by this special tool right here, and they are not connected to the oil return pump drive plate. When you look at the manual, this is actually called the oil return pump drive plate. Okay, anyway, and that's because this center part here is what actually drives the uh, oil return pump. The bolt holes here for the bolts that fasten the oil return plate to the exhaust cam uh, are very kind of a little really far over in this slot, and that is because Again, we're in U6 orientation. Once we rotate the engine, these will get kind of more central, and you can see where the old bolt marks are. Um, basically, this should be lining up almost perfectly with those holes. All right, so one thing to note about the timing chain tensioner. Um, this is actually a very new tensioner. I put this in the car not quite two years ago when I did the IMS bearing change on this car. There is a special tool for this, and it is tool number 9599, and it is actually a um, screw set timing chain tensioner so that you have the exact amount of, like the correct amount of preset tension in the chain. Now, I've read and I've watched videos and seen that you can actually use your base or your regular timing chain tensioners. They will do as long as there's oil in them. Now, if you have a brand new tensioner and you just got it out of the box, you need to preload the tensioner with oil by submerging it in oil and compressing the, uh, the tensioner. Now, of course, mine have been run a lot and they're full of oil. Uh, so I know, uh, I know, and not much oil has gotten out of it. So I know that these are good to go and I can use it for this purpose. Okay, so it is now time to torque down the timing chain tensioner, which gets torqued to 80 Newton meters.
we're going to rotate the engine from, like I said, U6 to UT. So we'll pull out our special tool here, the pin. And you don't I want to overturn it here, so I'm going to be very careful. As you can see, we're on UT. And there are our bolts, our, our um, orientation for the oil return pump plate, drive plate. All right, so here's these bolts. Oh, while we're at it, we're gonna check and make sure. This is still sitting taut, which is good. Uh, this thing actually was very, very slightly out of time. But of course you would maybe kind of expect that over 100,000 miles. Or it could be error on my part, I'm not really sure. Either way, the fact that it's roughly in the same spot makes me feel a lot better knowing that I'm not absolutely crazy and off my rocker. So, all right, so in a second here, we're gonna quadruple check this tool. Make sure it is sitting flat up against that which it is, sorry, my camera angle is the worst. I can't even move that because it's sitting that taut. So we will then torque those bolts. All right, so these get torqued to 14 Newton meters. It's gonna get a little bit of tension in them before I fully torque them since we are putting some rotational, I mean, torque is torque. We're putting rotational torque into the system and I don't wanna move anything. I need it all to be locked down in the, this exact orientation. Okay, 14. Okay, done. This bank in time all right everybody the guy with the green sweaters back that's gonna be it for today's episode we will pick up where we left off in the next episode with moving over to bank two thank you so much for tuning in to fun ahead tv One.